Have you ever wondered why trains don't bounce over the hills like roller coasters, or why railway tracks seem so smooth even over long distances? Well, that's all thanks to careful vertical design. As an engineer who reviewed designs for new junctions and other renewals, I quickly learned to appreciate challenges and complexities with vertical alignment design. It plays a crucial role in the railway construction and operations, affecting everything from train performance to passenger comfort. Stick around and by the end of this video, you'll understand the key design principles that keep trains running smoothly over hills, valleys, and everything in between. I'll break down each concept, explain its background, why it matters, and how it impacts railway operations. So let's get started with gradients. By far, the most common part of any vertical alignment design is constant gradients. This is the foundation element if there is one. What exactly is a gradient? In a vertical design, a gradient is a slope or incline, either up or down, that the track sits on. It is the vertical rise or fall of the track. While engineers might prefer a perfectly level track, this is extremely rare. Almost every track has some amount of gradient, even if it's very slight. You'll see gradients shown or expressed in one of two ways. The first method is using a ratio, such as 1 in 100. This means for every 100 meters along the track, the elevation changes by 1 meter. The second way is a percentage. So for our example, it would be 1%, as this is the change in height. Everyone has their preferred convention, and it's likely you'll see both of them put on a drawing or design. So why is gradient important? The gradient of the track has a direct and big impact on the performance of the trains that run on that track. Similar to driving a car or riding a bicycle uphill, it takes more power to get up a steep gradient, and if you have to stop, it then takes even more power to get started again. This increase in power requires more fuel or energy consumption. The extra power of the train also translates into higher forces on the rails and other track components, which can increase wear rates. Of course, what goes up must come down. While you'll see a climbing gradient expressed as positive, a falling gradient will be negative. Now, I know what you're thinking, but it depends on which way you're going as to whether it's rising or falling. Well, if you're looking at a design or drawing, it will commonly have a convention stated on it somewhere. In my experience, this has been reading the drawing from left to right. So gradients climbing from left to right, positive, and vice versa. Falling gradients have their own challenges as well. There is the risk of a train overspeeding, or even having a full runaway in the event of a brake failure. Excessive braking can also cause wear and damage to the rails, and increase the level of noise, which might not be best for the lineside neighbours. Now that we understand gradients, what happens when we need to transition from one to another? If we simply connected a rising gradient to a falling one, we'd get a sharp angle, something completely unsuitable for trains. That is where vertical curves come in. While they might not get beached on it as shown on screen, we need to remember that train carriages are long, fairly rigid vehicles that cannot bend as they go over humps. Then there is the fact that this would be pretty uncomfortable if you're a passenger. This is where our next concept comes in vertical curves. Before we dive into vertical curves, if you're finding this video useful and want to learn even more, I've got two free resources for you. First, I have a free six-day email course that breaks down the fundamentals horizontal track geometry, perfect for building a solid foundation of knowledge. Second, just for signing up to my email list, I'll send you my free guide to Kant ebook. Kant is one of the most crucial concepts in railway engineering, and this guide will give you everything you need to understand it clearly. Both are completely free. Just check the link in the description to grab them now. Vertical curves are exactly what they sound like. Curves in the vertical plane that smooth out transitions between gradients. They provide a smooth link between gradients, easing the passage of trains and helping manage passenger comfort as well as the stresses on the railway infrastructure. Think of vertical curves like speed bumps that stretched out over hundreds of metres. If a speed bump is too steep, your car would jolt violently, but a long shallow one makes for a smooth transition. That's exactly what we're aiming for in railway vertical alignment. Vertical curves come in two forms, depending on the gradients they're joining, hogs and sags. Hogs, also known as crests or summits, are convex curves that typically connect an upward gradient to a downward one. Sags, again known as valleys, are a concave shape and join a falling gradient to a rising one. To ensure that the transition across the vertical curve is smooth as possible, vertical curves are designed as parabolic curves. This type of curve is smooth and continuous, 
with a gradual rate of change in gradient. The two parameters track engineers are concerned about when it comes to vertical curves are the length and the radius. These two parameters determine if the vertical design can be installed, if it can be maintained, the ride quality that trains and passengers will experience, and if the design is ultimately safe. Longer curves with a greater radius are required for high speed trains and generally provide smoother transitions, which is why this is what designers aim for. But if the radius is too big or the curve too long, installation and then maintenance may be an issue, as the tampers used to install the final alignment designs or maintain the track may interpret these big numbers as a flat constant gradient. When it comes to determining the length of the curves to be used, in the UK there is a minimum length of 25 metres, with designs typically sticking to 5 metre increments. To fully understand the design of vertical curves, how lengths and radii are determined by designers, we need to jump ahead a little bit and discuss the next concept I have on my list, vertical acceleration. Vertical acceleration is the change in vertical velocity that the train and the passengers on board experience as they move across the vertical curve. You and I experience vertical acceleration as the feeling of being pushed down or lifted up in our seats. Have you ever driven over a sharp hilltop in a car at speed and felt your stomach drop? Then this is vertical acceleration. Your body wants to keep going forward, but the car is descending. If you go through the bottom of a dip in the road, you may feel the car go down on its suspension and feel pushed into your seat. Again, vertical acceleration. If you want to see a lot of examples of vertical acceleration at work, just look at any theme park or roller coaster ride. The designers harness vertical acceleration to create that experience that people are willing to pay for. Smooth vertical curves are so important because they ensure gradual changes in vertical acceleration. Now, if you're wondering how engineers decide on the vertical curve length, there are some simple equations to calculate it. Let's break them down. Curve length can be determined using the train speed, V, an acceptable rate of acceleration, A, which you'll normally find in your standards, and the change between the gradients, which should be in decimal form, G. When it comes to radius, the minimum curve radius is found with this equation, R equals V squared over little g times A, with little g being gravity and 9.81 meters per second squared. Then the curve length and radius are linked through this equation. Radius equals length divided by the change in big G. In the UK, the standards set limits on the acceptable value of vertical acceleration as a percentage of little g gravitational acceleration. You can see these on your screen now. And then with this formula, it's linking train speed and vertical curve radius. Notice the use of miles per hour for the speed and F is the percentage of little g. When talking about vertical curves, there are two more terms that you may come across that you really need to know. These are tangent and intersection points. Tangent points are the locations where vertical curves meet the constant gradient. The intersection point is where the two constant gradients would meet if no vertical curve was applied between them. The last concept to look at is the grade to grade transitions. You might be wondering, do we always need vertical curves? The answer is no. In some cases, if the gradient change is small enough, we can connect two rising or two falling gradients directly without issue and sometimes opposite gradients as well. Grade to grade transitions are when two gradients, both rising or both falling typically, are joined without a vertical curve. Grade to grade transitions are acceptable when the change between these gradients is minor, which ensures a smooth transition. They're also more acceptable in lower speed environments. Grade to grades are typically used for one of two reasons, necessity or optimization. In terms of necessity, the use of grade to grade transitions may be required to avoid placing a switch and crossing layout on a vertical curve, which can cause issues with the design and ongoing maintenance of the layout, such as the switch rail not sitting on its base plates properly. Or it could be in a platform area where having a vertical curve can cause issues with the platform to train stepping distances, leading to passenger safety problems. When it comes to optimization, remember earlier in this video we were discussing the radius and curve lengths and how if they're too large, tampers can struggle with them? Well, in that instance, a grade to grade change is the preferable solution as it eliminates the issue. So there you have it, vertical alignment is a key part of railway design, from managing gradients to ensuring smooth transitions with vertical curves. Without careful planning, trains would struggle up hills, speed dangerously down slopes, or jolt passengers over rough transitions. If you found this video useful, let me know in the comments. On the screen now is another of my videos that I think you'll like. Check it out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well to give this video a like.